गुड मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट विंग लोडिंग टुडे टिल दिस टाइम आई वॉज ट्राइंग टू हैव ए री लुक ऑन थ्रस्ट टू वेट रेशियो रिक्वायर्ड फॉर डिफरेंट मिशन एंड द अप्रोच हैड बीन विदाउट हैविंग मच ऑफ ए फॉर्मूला और ए डेटा शीट how can i get initial feel for these numbers using the law of physics similar approach we will also have on wing loading and knowing very well for a particular mission or operations or mission we need to have a cumulative effect of thrust to weight ratio as well as wing loading and a bet better design will ensure that we have optimally used both this thrust loading and wing loading smartly as and when required we have options to vary thrust loading by controlling the thrust we may not have that much of control to alter wing loading while in flight although we know because there will be fuel consumption wing loading will go on reducing as the weight of the whole aircraft will go on reducing similarly when you drop some stores from the aircraft the wing loading also will decrease we also know for a general aircraft when i am taking off and when i am landing the wing loadings are different typically passenger aircraft if you say where we are not dropping anything out of aircraft still the wing loading during take off and wing loading during landing will be different because substantial amount of fuel consumption will happen during the mission requirement even during cruise the wing loading during start of cruise and wing loading during end of cruise will also change because there is change in weight because of fuel consumption for a designer as i have been telling all the time that whatever wing loading you are talking about for a particular mission they should be translated back to wing loading take off that means if there is a particular wing loading required during cruise and you know weight has reduced so you have to correct the weight assuming it is in the take off conditions essentially it means the amount of fuel which is consumed that has to be added to the local weight during the cruise and divide by the wing area to get the wing loading during take off it's as simple as that and if i try to see wing loading w by s and try to see basic maneuvers or the mission here i know this is basically warm up and take off this is climb this is cruise and this is landing you also know whenever you are designing an aircraft from safety and standardization point of view regulatory authority prescribes different conditions for example if you see your civil if we are now it is es so this is there is a lot of uh, standardization is going on to ensure that globally we talk same thing but i am using old specification for a fir 23 certified aircraft under 
12,500 pounds take off gross weight the V stall is prescribed as less than equal to 61 knots which is roughly 30 meter per second you could see that we are talking about V stall and the takeoff and landing are either 10 20 percent more than V stall speeds which you know already but when I try to connect V stall and W by S I know this is 2 W by S by rho CL or CL max when I talk about V stall once you have chosen an airplane particular wing tail and fuselage combination you have a CL max fixed let's say this is CL max and let's say this is equal to 1.2 you can increase CL max locally by using flaps which are nothing but high lead devices and you can take this CL max from 1.2 to around 5 what is the implication of that? If you increase CL max, your V stall is going to reduce, and that will not only help you in reducing this takeoff distance, it will also reduce the amount of thrust required because you have to accelerate from here to that V takeoff speed. So that demands for a given altitude takeoff that demands a particular W by S. So one W by S selection should be once you prescribe V S equal to let's say V S star, then you know W by S required for that is half rho V square into C L max. And that V could be 1.1 to 1.2 V stall. Some where you will find it may be 1.15 or 1.3 during all those numbers are as per the regulatory prescriptions. The important thing is once I know at what altitude I am going to take off, because you can take off from sea level also from a high altitude. then you already know V is nothing but 1.1 to 1.2 times V stall and what CL max you are going to fly that will decide what sort of a wing loading you require. For example, your V stall limitation is there if say V stall cannot be more than 30 meter per second then roughly you know V takeoff will be 30 into let's say 1.2 so that you put here density of air put here put the CL max value if it is just a plain wing maybe around 1.1 to 1.2 if you are using different types of flaps that will increase the value of CL max so you know what is the W by S required for maintaining the takeoff conditions this is one way you are getting an idea of wing loading required for a particular prescribed takeoff. But one advantage you have, you can see here, if you want to manipulate VS or in turn want to manipulate V takeoff, you can always play around with CL max value by using flaps by giving different different deflections on the flaps. When you come to climb and let us say somebody gives you an expression rate of climb is equal to or rate of climb maximum is equal to W by S into Z divided by 3 rho infinity C D naught let me write this
T by W max square to L by D square Z and rate of climb maximum this is for jet and for propeller NP by W minus 0.8 776 under root W by S rho CD naught by L by D 3 by 2. And of course, here the Z equal to 1 plus under root 1 plus 3 L by D square into T by W max square, something like this. If as a designer, you see this expression, I'm definite a designer will not get really motivated when he is thinking in terms of a conceptual design. Right? And whatever interaction I am having with you, I am trying to see that for developing basic understanding, we should avoid this expression at a conceptual stage. And what will be our approach? Let me discuss that. Let's say we're talking about rate of climb. Let me talk about rate of climb. What is the rate of climb? We understand from basic fundamental is dv minus dv by w. And we know very well, this is the excess power divided by the weight, and you're assuming it climb at a constant speed, right, at a small angle. So now if I see this, if I can write this as T by W into V, please understand, we are trying to see how wing loading is going to affect rate of climb. That is our basic understanding. Minus Q infinity C D V by W by S. Right? Drag is half rho V square, that is Q infinity C D V. And this I can further write as V into T by W minus half rho V square S C D by W by S, where V equal to roughly, V equal to roughly 2 W by S by rho C L. As you understand, when I am climbing, then this is the lift, lift is going to balance only the W cos gamma component. So, there will be a cos gamma here, but we are assuming a small climb. If that is true, then what do I get? Then I get rate of climb, see rate of climb equal to under root 2 W by S by rho C L T by W minus 1 by C L by C D. So, rate of climb I can write as V into T by W minus half rho V square S C D by W by S and now I can write this as under root 2 W by S rho C L into T by W minus half rho for V square I write 2 W by S by rho C L into S into C D by W by S, right? Half rho V square for V square 2 W by S by rho C L, then S C D by W by S and this gives me 2 W by S rho C L 
t by w minus rho rho gets cancelled, 2 gets cancelled, w by gets cancelled and uh, s should not be here but w by s is here, I wrongly wrote s. So, this will be minus 1 by C L by C D. Please check this expression side. So, for a designer, he will be very happy with this sort of an expression if at all he wants to derive an expression and these are based on very simple understanding and from this what message he gets? You see the rate of climb will increase if you are flying at a w by s higher which is true w by s higher means wing area relatively less so drag will be less. So, for a given thrust you will have a more speed so rate of climb should increase because the rate of climb is nothing but v sin gamma. So, everything remaining same if the wing area reduces then the speed increase will be more. So, w by s increasing means wing area reducing drag is reducing so rate of climb will increase and also here you see as t by w is increased rate of climb will increase and also when have larger C L by C D, this value will diminish. So, again rate of climb will increase. So, this gives a clear cut understanding to the designer what is the combined effect of T by W and W by S when I am talking about rate of climb. So, he does not go into so many big big equations from there he tries to evolve a conceptual design. Okay. So, from rate of climb now we will try to understand the cruise. This is indirectly we are also revising before we try to utilize this for our aircraft configuration selection at a conceptual stage. You remember for cruise primarily we talk about range because if you see the mission requirement the loiter will be for 20 minutes, 30 minutes and maximum time it is the range that determines the mission requirements. Now, looking for wing loading to meet range requirement and if I take propeller driven aircraft and we know that for range maximum the condition was C L should be equal to C D naught by K which essentially meant C L by C D is maximum. What does it mean in terms of wing loading that is our important? When I am talking about range maximum and talking about cruise that means lift is equal to weight. So, I write half rho v square s C L equal to weight and for C L I write half rho V square S C L is C D naught by K equal to weight. So, W by S equal to half rho V square under root pi aspect ratio E C D naught because we know K equal to 1 by pi aspect ratio E We're talking about low subsonic speeds and these are the estimates we am trying to find for my conceptual design right. So, that tells me W by S equal to Q root of pi aspect ratio E C D naught. Now, at a conceptual design stage, how do I know these numbers? My aircraft is not ready, but you could see that Q infinity means the dynamic pressure. So, naturally, when you are conceptualizing an aircraft, you try to know what altitude I should be flying or cruising. Mostly, if it is a turboprop or jet engine. It is around 30,000 feet the tropopause 
where the engines are most efficient and also you have an idea about what sort of cruise speed you want to fly because if you see that once you are talking about range maximum your CL is fixed so CL equal to under root CD naught by K so once I am cruising at a particular altitude I have also a fixed speed with which I should because CL is fixed and typical value of CD naught at the conceptual stage you can take around 0 0.025 and K where aspect ratio you can take around 8 and E is better you take less 0.7 this is what my numbers okay but if you see some recommendations you will find for a propeller driven aircraft they are telling CD naught you take as 0 0.02 and for jet, it is 0 0.015, E 0 0.6 for fighter, and E 0 0.8 for transport. So that gives you a fair idea about what sort of range we are talking about. But you will be surprised, you will find that if you want to fly at the CL for which your range will be maximized, this may not satisfy your requirement for the speed. In a sense, it may happen that speed is too low. So then you don't have an option, but you have to select the speed at which you are flying and try to get a W by S value. But you should be very careful that this expression of W by S has assumed that CL equal to CD naught by K. Right? For example, if you are not able to fly at CL equal to CD naught by K, that means you are not flying at L by D maximum, then you have no other option but to get W by S from this half row, V square S CL equal to W. So W by S will be half row V square CL. And if we have chosen a speed at a given altitude, which is a requirement, and then you have to find out what sort of CL we are going to fly. Since you do not have an idea of W by S, so you see historic data, same class of data, airplane, you find CL may be 0.2 or 0.3. So accordingly, pick that number, right? But basically, when you are talking about range maximum, this is the way you pick. All those things will come later, you realize that. Then we talk about W by S loiter. When you talk about loiter, I must mention at this point that mostly we design transport airplane for more for in, uh, range rather than loiter. Loiter will be 20, 30 minutes. But still, we need to have an idea about loiter specifications and see what is the wing loading required to maintain that loiter. Now, how do I do that? You know, for jet, uh, W by S, you can easily see it will be Q pi aspect ratio E C D naught and for propeller W by S will be Q 3 pi aspect ratio E C D naught. How does it happen? Because for a jet airplane, if you are going for endurance maximum, that time the C L requirement is C L equal to C D naught by K. This is for jet. E max endurance max you can revise your lecture and this is for a propeller CL required is under root 3 CD naught by K this is for propeller E max if this is CL you know how to find out W by S by equating lift equal to weight okay so you are now having expressions for W by S again story same this is pi what is the aspect ratio, what is the typical value of U, E, with typical value of CD naught, initially you have to take and get the field for W by S. Generally, it is best to assume loiter speed around 150 to 200 knots. One knot is roughly 
0.5 meter per second and for an 80 to 120 knots for piston prop prop and this is for turbo prop jet okay these are guidelines the typical little loiter speed now for some time we'll be talking about turn rates that one turning is possible it turns like this and maintains the altitude and speed right and that is it turns but it loses the altitude so that is what we're talking about is instantaneous turn rate and it not a condition that you should maintain the speed or altitude and you can understand in contrast to instantaneous turn rate is sustained turn rate where the condition is that I am doing a turn same time the speed should be maintained we maintained as well as altitude is also maintained So you have to really play with the thrust. Obviously you understand this is more demanding. So if you want to go for maximum turn rate, you prefer an instantaneous turn rate. Or indirectly, I can say you can get higher turn rate if you are going for instantaneous turn rate. Because for sustained turn rate, some part of the energy will be utilized in maintaining V and the altitude. Right. So we will just talk about first instantaneous turn rate. Well, you know this expression under root n square minus 1 by v and where lift equal to nw or the load factor n equal to lift a wet ratio where n equal to ratio would be lift and the weight typically sustained turn rates are lower than instantaneous turn rate for reason which I explained earlier for instantaneous turn rate value I could see anything between 6 to 8 g accelerations but if I want to really find out what is the wing loading required for instantaneous turn rate, how do I find out? Simplest way to do that is, if you know what is the N required from this expression, that is, at what speed, at what turn rate I want to move, that will correspond to a particular value of N, right? And then, you know, lift equal to NW, put that value of N, and half rho v square SCL equal to NW. So CL I know, or W by S I know, as Q CL max by N. Is this clear? What is the turn rate you require? At what speed I require? it gives me what is the value of n required. For this value of n, I come here and find out what is the W by S required for maintaining instantaneous turn rate at a particular dynamic pressure. This is given by this, but please be careful. This CL max is not as high as CL max when you're talking about takeoff or landing, right? So this value typically will be CL max for all practical purpose it will fight 0 0.6 to 0.8 for fighter with single trailing edge flap during combat. This is important during combat. You never would like to use all these things during normal flight because a lot of penalty you give. 
similarly CL Mac could be 1 to 1.5 for complex fighter airplane, complex fighter aircraft. But when I write this, please understand the at high speed, maybe around 300 meter per second, if you are doing a combat, then there's a lot of drag penalty and a lot of excess thrust is required. Right? But, but if an airplane is meant for that, then you have to have this much of wing loading. So we are now uh, seeing that what sort of wing loading is required for different mission requirement. We have talked about instantaneous turn rate. We have also mentioned about sustained turn rate. In the next class, we will again revisit instantaneous turn rate and sustained turn rate. Now we will see them together and see why sustained turn rate is important, why instantaneous turn rate is important. Right? Thank you very much.